Hey guys, what's up my YouTube family? So, um, I thought I would, this might sound kind of weird or different, but, um, I'm currently reading a book from my, my ministry class. Some of you may know that I'm, I'm in a four year education program to become ordained as a minister in my local church. And so, um, I'm not going to be a pastor or a preacher, I'm just going to be, um, a deacon in the church. And so, um, my current class is on ethics, and this is a book we're currently reading called Choosing the Good by Dennis P. Hollinger. And for some reason, I just feel like reading some of this out loud, and it might seem kind of weird to you, but I want to just read some of this out loud, because when someone's reading out loud, it helps me understand things better, and, um, <coughs> excuse me. Mm. And I just felt like reading some of this out loud on video. So, okay. I'm reading the introduction here. It's called The, the Moral Life and Christian Ethics. <coughs> I'm reading several pages here, so get comfortable. <laughs> Tom and Sarah have been married for eight years. And during the past four, have experienced the anguish of unsuccessfully trying to start a family. They are both 32 years old and are feel feeling the pinch of time regarding their childbearing efforts. After numerous consultations and attempts at various approaches, they have learned that Tom has a low sperm count. They are now faced with several possibilities. Their doctor at the fertility clinic has laid out the most viable medical option, artificial insemination by a donor. The sperm would come from an anonymous donor, though Tom and Sarah would have a choice concerning the background and characteristics of the donor. The child would be Sarah's biologically but would have no biological link to Tom. For several years, this couple has been praying for a child, believing that children are a gift from God and part of the divine order of things. <coughs> Should Tom and Sarah opt for artificial insemination, knowing that the procreation would occur outside their own sexual bond with an, with an anonymous biological father? What is morally right and good in this situation? What is the will of God regarding this, this technology and their married life together? That's situation number one. Situation number two. <coughs> Sorry for my cough, guys. My asthma is really bad tonight. The Acme Advertising Agency has just signed a contract with the Jordan Company, a new clothes and cosmetics manufacturer. Jordan wants to capitalize on a lucrative market for new clothes and hairstyles. Young women in their late teens and early 20s. Their plan for doing so relies on developing a full media advertising campaign. One that will depict the awesome Jordan look. The campaign will consist primarily of TV ads showing young women with the Jordan look in sexy situations surrounded by adoring guys. One of the company's new Jordan look product lines is a wave setting lotion called Natural Wave. After several weeks of brainstorming and tests with the product, the Acme team hits upon the, an idea for a new TV commercial for advertising Natural Wave. While the voiceover or narration introduces a viewer to Natural Wave, the camera will show a drinking straw being soaked in a bowl of a lotion. Drinking straws curl up when soaked in Natural Wave, and the camera will show this. The commercial will not, however, actually say Natural wave will curl your hair just like this straw. Afterward, the camera will depict the wavy haired Jordan Look girl with a handsome man at her side. 
Michelle is a vice president for personnel at the Jordan Company and has just gotten wind of the proposed advertising strategy and content. Marketing and advertising lie outside her responsibilities within the company, but as a Christian, she has attempted to carry out her profession with integrity and high moral standards. She has a sense the natural way of advertisement has gone beyond what the products can actually yield, and she's offended by the sexual overtones of both the clothing and natural wave advertisements. What should she do? Should she risk her job, or at least alienation within top-level management, who likes the ads, by the way, by objecting? Since she's not in advertising or marketing, should she just ignore the situation? And what about responsibilities to her family, who depend on her income? Should Michelle leave the company? The situation, too. <coughs> situation three. In 1999, the United States joined with NATO NATO forces in a massive air war against Yugoslavia. Slobodan Milosevic, sorry if I'm saying his name wrong, Slobodan Milosevic and his armed forces have for years been practicing ethnic cleansing most recently against Albanians, the majority group in the province of Kosovo. In response to Milo Sevic's actions against the Albanians, NATO bombing targeted military resources, government buildings, key transportation routes, and industrial complexes that supported the Yugoslavian armed forces. In the process, numerous civilians were killed including personnel at the Chinese embassy, bombed by mistake, and Albanian refugees forced by the Serb military to flee from their homes. The entire infrastructure of population centers in Yugoslavia was virtually destroyed. During the war, Stephen, serving as a high-level official in the State Department of the United States, with access to detailed, classified information regarding the Kosovo situation. He has direct access to military leaders and even the president. He knows the horrors committed by the Yugoslavian regime, but he is not at all convinced that the NATO response can be effective. Moreover, <clears throat> while he believes that some wars are just, he's not sure this one meets the just war criteria. What should he do? What kind of person is he if he goes contrary to his convictions? And what bearing does his faith have on this international situation? These three scenarios engender the kinds of questions that human beings have raised for centuries. <coughs> what should we do in situations in which we have a sense that right and wrong is involved? What kind of people should we be in the midst of the push and pull of responsibilities we feel toward others, institutions, and even nations? How should we live in the midst of a complex world or in those situations that are not so complex? And what is the basis for our judgments on these issues? These are the questions of the moral life. And these are the kind of issues dealt with in the discipline of ethics. I'm going to stop reading right there, guys. But this is a book I'm reading called Choosing the Good by Hollinger. And it's really making me think about the decisions that we make regarding right and wrong. Do we, do we turn a blind eye? Do we just ignore what's happening because it could cost us something? Or do we follow our convictions even though we know it could mean losing our job? Losing our home, losing our family or our friends. Um, ethics is a very complex um, topic. And um, I, I thought this really helped me think about those things in a way I never thought about them before. So I'm going to go ahead and go, guys. Thanks for listening to me read all this. And um, I will see you in my next video.